What's going on, folks? Just wanted to start off my class with that. All right. Hey, how good are you with your with your um? How good are you with your elements? You know? uh, really, really bad, actually. All right. Let's I'm see if you know lie. any of them. I'm not gonna lie to you. All right. Um. I I have my deck of cards. I'm I usually like going over this uh, first thing. So I want you folks to see if you can do it. Um. Actually, you know what? I want you. Oh yes, yeah, you're absolutely right. I should start the recording. No, I did. I did. I started the recording. I started this. Dude, in in chemistry in, in algebra class, I was like, I was looping. I don't know what was going on, but I was just like, I was, I was like, uh, and then I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was weird. It, I, I started like calling out the wrong numbers. I made all these mistakes. I can't believe that my my students didn't revolt at this point. Anyway, let's. Let's do this one. I'm going to show you a bunch of uh, elements. I'm just going to try them out and see if you can get any of these from me, Matson. All right. I got my periodic table pulled not, up. Oh, no. You're not supposed to have the periodic <laughs> table. All right. Here. What is this one? I see. Um, Scandium. I knew that. Oh, that's... Um, Technetium. Technetium, yeah. Oh, you know that one. I did know that one. Here, you can have that one. Thank you. I'm All right. Take this one. What is this one? Ooh, I really did get it right. Um... <laughs> Antimony. Uh, and, ah, yes, antimony. The one I, the one I missed. You know this one. Oh, that would be, uh, that would be the big C. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Carbon. Carbon. I knew that. Zirconium. Zirconium. Palladium. Yeah. Chromium. Gallium. Boron. Silicon. I knew boron. Neobidium. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was yours. Aluminum. Aluminium. Alumi as, okay. Alum can you cut me some slack on that one? Actually. Aluminium, as they say in the British. But you're right. Aluminum, as they say, is American. Hey, we're all Americans here, so. Let me take this. All right. Strontium. Strontium. Close. I, I got that one. All of that sound made a difference. Yeah, it was coming one? out. Don't worry. Uh, just, I need practice, really. Do you guys know this? Snoozium. Uh, sneezy. Snooze. Sneeze. Uh, snatch, uh. It's tin. I knew, see, that was that was coming. That was my third guess. Tin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was my third guess. Yeah, your third guess started off with... It, it did not. I was just warming up my vocals. All right, so yeah, check this out. Back. Here's what you definitely need to do, yeah. and here's what everyone else needs to do. One of the assignments I have is the periodic table assignment. I want you to memorize the first 54. And it's not that you have to memorize the whole thing. You just need to memorize what symbol goes with what name. So I basically ask you to make a video archive recording or a video recording straight from your Google thing where you basically go through each fast card and you kind of just tin, niobidium, silicon, boron, gallium, chromium. And it's been 10 years since I did it, so I screwed up. I, I missed like four of them. Man, wow. Yeah, me too. All right. Get it under three minutes, and I'd be impressed. Under 54 and three minutes, or all of them in three minutes? 54 and three minutes. Okay. I did it in two minutes, and that was like the only other time I did it was like 10 years ago. So I want you folks to get to know these flashcards. I want you to buy two decks of cards. And don't use the second deck yet, because I have other things I want you to use for the second deck. All right? I just so, want index cards. Yeah, use... you. Can, all right, I'll tell you what. I told you guys to use uh, decks of cards because the because the cards are thicker, and I like them better. But if you need to use... If you want to use cardstock and just print it up on there, it saves you time and money. Do that. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to... Like, I don't care. Um, if you want to use index cards and write it all out, by all means... Index, yeah, index cards. Index cards, you want to print it out and cut it all up and then tape it on. Go that for is, it. That's what I did. Is, you, you made yours already? Out of index cards, yeah. You better practice, buddy. He only got I've, two I've of them. I've been looking at I've, been, I've, <laughs> I've had other things. I mean, Macbeth. There's been Macbeth reading. And... Okay. All right. So, any question? Oh, yeah. Uh, which details do I want you to memorize? I'll get to those eventually, especially when we... I want you to do the first 54. So... Uh, I don't know. That's whatever the has 54 protons on it. Yeah, if you can make more cards than that, that'd be great. But for now, I want you to memorize the first 54. Um, I want you to be able to go through this pretty quick. Eventually, I'm going to have you do the whole periodic table in two minutes, and that's my goal. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, let's take a look at the other assignment that we have. And then I think that I'm going to finish off uh, nomenclature. And I think on Monday, I'm going to start up on stoichiometry. Next week, Wednesday, we have a lab, 
and that lab is going to be pretty awesome. We are going to be making s'mores and also mixing up certain, um, not really full-on chemicals this time. I know I really want to get to that, but uh, stoichiometry is going to lend itself to making s'mores. So I want you folks to bring in like um, marshmallows and chocolate and graham crackers and we'll sit around and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get it, figure out how to get a fire up here and we'll make s'mores. And that will be a part of our lab. I'm serious. That's that's, that's what I'm. That's my planning. You know what s'mores are, right? I have no idea what s'mores. I've never, never done s'mores before in my life. You're serious? Believe it or not. Okay. Yes. It's amazing. Great. It's, is it like? It's, is it's, it as good as I think they are? You you take all right. Well, you take marshmallows. Yeah. You put chocolate on the marshmallows. I get it. The the, the and you put the graham crackers and, and you make a graham cracker chocolate marshmallow of, sandwich. Yeah, it sounds delicious, but I've never actually put them all together. I've had fires before. I've just roasted marshmallows. That's right horrible, now. man. That's I'm sorry. Horrible. Are you are you like are you, are you communist? <laughs> Scratch that. You got me. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I don't know. But you know what? I'm not communist either. So, hmm. Deal with it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a red blooded American. I bleed red, white, and blue. All right, moving on. So I wanted to take a look at this thing over here because I thought it would be interesting. Let's look at this thing. I'm going to turn off my video camera because you don't need to see my face anymore. I need a haircut, man. All right. Full screen. Sharing the desktop. Let me know when you guys can see my computer screen. Should pop up pretty soon. Because I want to take a look at people's projects. And I apologize if I didn't get your approval on that. How, how were you... Were we supposed to, like... Can you, you see my you computer or something? Or how, how are we supposed to turn this into you? Because I made a pretty bad version of Iron Man. Oh, you, you need to email me the link. I want to see that. Okay. That that sounds awesome. It was just the mass, and it was really bad. Oh, it was junk. It was junk, but it was Iron Man. I oh, got the, okay. I basically got the colors right, and that was it. Oh, I thought you meant, like, bad, like, it's bad. No, I mean bad like it was bad. Okay. I mean, it was... You meant bad, bad. Yeah, bad I mean, isn't bad, I mean, not bad, bad isn't bad. Bad is not good, bad. All right, all right. I can see your screen now. We had, a, we had a whole conversation on that, apparently. All right, let me take a look at this real quick, because I think it's interesting. Um, ooh, six people submitted the grades. Let's take a look at their submissions. This is the lab scaling. Oh, wait, I don't want to download it. Someone, I, I was going through the links, like, just a second ago, and I saw someone posted a butterfly. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was really that was really cool. That I don't was, know who did that. That was some creative stuff. That right was there. awesome. All right, let's take a look at these... these um, Things. And I th thought to me one of the most interesting ones was this one right here. I liked it a lot. Um, I'm going to open this up on our – let me see. There's a program you could download. If you guys like – if you folks really like the 3D, like building 3D, 3D models, um, then you can actually download uh, a – uh, one that you can work on offline. I don't know if it works on Chromebook. Actually, I can tell you now, it probably won't work on Chromebook. Okay. You can use my um, computer. But you can use your other computer and download it. It's called 123D. 123D D Design or something like that. It's pretty cool. Um, for some reason, it's not letting me uh, open things inside of the other file, so I want to take a look at it over here. 123D right. Design? Yeah, 123D Design. Okay. Let me bookmark that so I can get back to it at home. All right. So, why, did you enjoy the 3D stuff? I actually, I really enjoyed it right. a lot, even though my Iron Man looks like, it, it's, it's bad. By the way, I've got Mastin in here. <laughs> Mastin's pretty cool. Sorry, guys. He's all right. All right. Uh, you're pretty cool, too, Mr. Dolly. Let's take a look at this one right here, because I like this uh, project right here. Um, let me see. I don't know how to control this one. I'll be honest with you. This one, two, three D design is not as good, easy to control as the other one. But let's take a look at this. This is a periodic table, and here it is normally. You guys got it. And here it is upside down, not upside down, but just on the other side. Look at what is this? Um, you're nervous about it because it's forty points. Look. If Mr. Dollar, if I'm hand grading it, then I'll, 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 I'm a lot nicer than the computer is. I'll, I'll let you know that. So submit something, you know, and 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 uh, I mean submit good quality work. But 
I'm a lot nicer than computers. I'm just, I'll just leave it at that. Let's take a look at this. The density of these elements. This is a, a density of these elements. And the reason why I want to look at this is because I've never seen this picture before. Um, what, what's really cool is the project that I have you folks creating, this 3D periodic table, I would really like to print it up in 3D because I've never seen models like this before. And I thought to myself, I wonder why this thing is higher density over here, why it's super dense in the middle. You know, because usually everyone else's picture is going to be densest or it's going to have the high bars on the, you know, one side or the other side or the bottom corners or something like that. But why does it come up in the middle and then come back down? I thought that was really interesting. And do, have, do you guys notice that? I mean, if you're looking at this graph, this thing is, this is the measurement of density. You can see that um, which, which kinds of elements are the most densest? I'm assuming that the answer would be the metalloids. Yeah, it's, there we go, the metalloids. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the, um, actually, that would be, they're called the transition metals. The transition metals are the most densest. And I thought to myself, well, why is that? And I think it has something to do with um, the, I, it has something to do with the electrons um, or the, the way the, the uh, elements bond together. And they bond together in such a way um, that they have this property called metallic bonding. And metallic bonding, you can actually get those uh, molecules to be closer to each other because they're a more efficient way of bonding. As opposed to if you have two carbon things bonding together, that doesn't make as tight of a bond. So when you can make tighter bonds, you can fit things closer to each other. When you can fit things closer to each other, you can fit more things in a smaller space. And anytime you have that, it's denser. So I'll be honest with you, I couldn't find this in a textbook as far as like this picture. Um, so it's, it's exciting to me because what you folks are creating is actual stuff that I think, you know, like not one of a kind stuff. It's just a new way of looking at things that I think is really interesting. And um, I didn't understand that principle. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of still don't understand why it's high in the middle. I'm telling you my hypothesis. We can go and test it. We can go ask a full-on professor and see if that's, that's the case. But I think that that's the reason why. That would be my guess. Because I'm looking at this, I'm like, hmm, this thing looks interesting. Let's take a look at some other students. Um, so maybe that's to excite you folks about like what this, what this project can do. Because there's a lot of stuff that, all right, let's see. I think this one was interesting to me too. All right. I think this was the ionization energy. No, no, no. I know what this is. This is the the radius. This is the size of the elements. So I think that um, it was Francis Goldsmith who made this one. By the way, can you folks hear my voice? No one's responding, which makes me worried. All right, okay. just making sure. Um, you folks are all in, in deep thought then, I guess. If you look at how this thing trends, this is that the part of the periodic table. Um, if you look at how this thing trends, it looks to me like it gets, well, describe it for me. And we'll talk about why. Can you describe for me this, this 3D model? Where does it get bigger? Well, um, help. Thank you, thank you. Yes, it is higher on the right. It's higher on the right. Well, I guess, you know, I'm looking at this a little bit backwards. Um, if you were to look at it as if it were a real periodic table, it's actually technically higher on the left. Does that make sense? So group one is higher. I'm just looking at this because it's easier to see this way. Okay. All right. 
What about as it comes across the periodic table? As it comes, as it as it goes further to the quote unquote right. It seems to be getting larger. Yeah. It gets no, no, no. Look, it's where, where, bigger where here. This is the this is the left side where I have my mouse. Oh, okay. Wait, what? That's the that's the left side. It's and so it, as it goes to the right. Okay, let me revert. Okay, okay. Yeah, you just kind of got to think of this as a three D picture in your mind. I have it pictured like this because it's uninteresting to look at the other side. So this is the left side of the periodic table, and here's the right side. And you're absolutely right, Alana. Is it starts to decrease? It gets it's big over here. And it starts to get smaller over here. Oh, I flipped the left and the right. So as you go down, it gets bigger, right? As you go down the periodic table, it gets bigger. Right. And as you go to the uh, right, it gets smaller. You guys got it? I'm pretty, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. I think that that was... Um, Goldsmith's one, and I think that f that was Francis, and she did atomic radius. Let's take a look at, at something right here. Atomic radius periodic table trends. I wonder if they have any good images on it. Oh, okay, this, this might be good. Here's another picture of it. This is 2D. I like our 3D picture much better. But this kind of, you, you can see what's going on here. Right? Yeah. It gets bigger as it gets That's to it. the bottom left. And it also gets, it, as you go towards the right, it gets smaller. Now, why is that? Well, I think that, if you, if you think about it, um, as this one right here, how many shells does this have? Do you remember that discussion we had about shells? The hydrogen and the helium. How many shells does that guy have? It has one shell. Exactly. And then lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. How many shells does, does do they have? They all have two shells. Exactly. There we go. So we go is it and then up? sodium... Magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, uh, yeah, yeah, sulfur, chlorine, argon. How many shells? Three. 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 Right. Four, five, six, as you go, right? Yeah, thank you for summing that up. So as you get, as you add more shells, the radius gets bigger. That yeah. would make sense. Logically, yeah. Which is why the thing gets bigger as you go down, because this is adding one shell, one shell, one shell, one shell, one shell. Does that make sense to you? I think that, that what's cool about this and what I'm really excited about this is um, I wasn't able to, um, I mean, I want you to create the 3D models so that way you can see these really cool things. Faustine! Sorry. Uh, never mind. She's out. I, I did not call her name. I want her. I, I was... I don't know, she looked at me like, wow, you sound just like Mr. Dalton. Um, you want to talk after this? Or you, I'm sure you got to go, but send me an email with, with what's going on. I'll go ch double check with the capsule what happened. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so check this out. As you go further down the list, it gets bigger because we're adding on a shell. That makes perfect sense. Logically, yes. Why is it getting smaller as you go to the right? Essentially, you're adding... When I go to the right, I'm adding a proton, aren't I? Because cesium, bar barium has one more proton than cesium. It's Lead has gas? has more protons. It's a gas. No, um, no, it's not a gas. I mean, yes, you're right. These are tend to be gases, but that's not the reason why. I'm actually giving you the hint when I'm saying, even though you're adding a proton onto here, you would figure that it would get bigger. Right? Because you're adding one proton and one electron and one neutron to that mix. So you figured as you go further to the right, it would get bigger. Do you agree? But 
here's the thing, and I think this is interesting. As you go further to the right, when you add one proton and one electron, when you have more protons in there, what does that make it? More what? It makes it more positive. And when you add one electron there, it makes the shells more negative. Yes. And when you have a stronger positive in the middle and a stronger negative in the outside, what can you say about that? those things? Stronger positive in the middle. And a stronger power. positive in the middle because you're adding more electron, more protons. And what is that extra protons and those extra electrons going to do in the periodic table, in, in your element? It's going to add mass, but it's also going to pull in those that thing tighter. Just make it more dense? Is this what you're... Well, no. What I'm getting at is it will make the radius smaller. Oh! Because the positive on the inside is bigger positive, and the negative on the outside is bigger negative, and those things will attract each other more, and so it will make the radius smaller. So now it gives you this whole new picture when you look at this when you look at this uh, 3D layout of the periodic table, you understand, oh, I understand why it gets bigger when I go down, and as I go further to the right of the periodic table, it gets smaller. Does that make sense to you? I think that, that what's, what's really cool about this is, if I were to show, if, since I made you do the project, then you folks have a new appreciation for it. If anything, because you you folks had to do every single step and it was annoying, right? And half of you didn't do it yet. That's fine because it's not due yet. I think it's due, what, tomorrow or something like that? The uh, 40 point. Yeah, the 40 yeah, point one. Tomorrow. It's due tomorrow. So that that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm not burning. I'm just actually point, pointing out um, some of the people who did, did theirs. Um, I, I thought they were very interesting, and I like how the projects came out. I look forward to seeing everyone's, to be honest. Do you have the abundance in the solar system? What is that? You gave me abundance in the solar system? Yes. What? I'm, cu I'm curious to know which elements are most abundant in the solar system. Oh, and why. okay. I'm like, wow, that's quite a vast topic there. No, no, no. no. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah, but I think the instructions are very clear on this, on this assignment. I think it's a very cool one, but I think the instructions are very clear, so don't freak out. I'm got not, it? Okay. All right, so that's that. Now we're moving on to the finish off nomenclature. What up, Alex? Do you want to come and talk to me about something? Sorry, I've got students coming and visiting me. What's up? Uh, do you know what's called, uh, which students are in group five? Um, inside of the lab write-up that I have posted today, uh, there is a link to the group, and you can know exactly who's inside of your group from that link. Oh, thanks. Um, how was the lab today? What? How was the lab today? Was it hard? My opinion? Yeah. Well, it was fun, but it was messy. Do you think that you guys can make a filter well, in four weeks? Well, if my group works together yeah. and has good cooperation, you, there. you right. could, you know, make a filter. All right, good. Probably not a good one, but we can No, I'm sure you can make a good one. All right, thanks. Thanks for coming All in. All right. All right, so check this out. We are moving on to something else. Um, I think Matson was like, what is that cool Pokemon thing that you have on your desk? Uh, yeah, what is that cool Pokemon thing that you have on your desk? It's actually a quiz that I'm going to give you. Oh, wow, well, that just makes it less cool. Why? Your teacher went through the trouble of making a Pokemon quiz. For a quiz? Yeah, a, a, a Pokemon quiz. I mean, if it was just Pokemon, I'd be totally fine, but... Yeah, it's a Pokemon quiz! Just throw the quiz in there. It just stresses me out now, and I can't even think about fine, it. Fine, fine. It will be a cool. Pokemon homework. How's that? Okay, that sounds much, that sounds much, much more, less stressful. All right, all right. Let's move, let's let's finish off this nomenclature thing, because I think that that's, that's the last topic. And this stuff is, it, it, it isn't easy. All right. We're going to be moving on to stoichiometry after this, and that sounds even worse. So, what, what? It's called stoichiometry. 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 Sto it's German, I think. Um, we're going to be moving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leave it up to those Germans. I should know. I'm communist, apparently. Oh. <laughs> we went there, didn't we? All right. So, okay, so let's, let's talk about this one. 
We talked about, um, I think I talked to you folks about binary compounds um, with the two flavors of like, for example, lead, PB, comes in two flavors. It comes in either the positive 4 flavor or the um, positive 2 flavor. Got it? So yes. that would be um, a cation that comes in two different styles. So um, if I ask you, well, what is uh, PBCL4? And I ask you, what is the, the, the element name of that? Then you would say, okay, well, if I look at the periodic table, the CL, you can tell, is a negative 1 ion. You ask me, how do, how do you look that up? And I say, well, you look at the periodic table, and there you go. Boom. Yeah, yes, I'll pull, fine, I'll pull it up. But eventually, I'm going to basically just, you know, stop, stop babying you guys and just move on. All right, here. Look, CL is right here. This column right here has zero ions. This guy, these columns right, this column right here, they like to gain one electron because they have seven electrons in their outermost shell. And if you, they gained one, they're like, man, I wish I could gain one so I can get eight in my outermost shell. I'd be happy. That's why CL always makes a negative one ion, if it makes an ion at, at all. And it almost always does because it wants to make it, it wants to be complete so badly. Got right. it? So you know CL has a negative one charge. If there's four of them, then that would mean that the flavor of PB that you must have had is a positive four. Because there's four CLs to balance out that positive four PB. Got it? Okay. So if I ask you to um, write this down, then you would write lead four chloride. Got it? As opposed to lead 2 chloride. Because you know that even though I didn't write it over here, this PBCL4 is actually the positive 4 flavor of lead. Now there's a table in on page 62 in uh, problem or table 2.4 which tells you the most common ones. And I'm going to, I'm just letting you know now, I'm going to ask you to write out um, some flashcards for those ones as well. Because those ones you'll need to know. And it's only like one, two, or it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. It looks like fifteen of them. There's fifteen of them. Okay. That's so that's not so bad. Drastic. Got it? And then there's another fifteen of these ones. And these are also really important. So these ones are called polyatomic molecules. Um, for example, ammonia, ammonium, A-M-M-O-N-I-U-M. This stuff smells like pee because there's a lot of ammonia in pee. It's also a lot of in cleaning uh, products, which I have no idea why they put cleaning products, um, or ammonia has cleaning products and pee at the same time. It doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, I'm not a chemist. I'm a physicist, but I'm teaching chemistry. Um, the equation is NH4+. Plus. And we'll go into why these things make, um, these things like to make these specific polyatomic uh, ions. But for now, um, you folks should just kind of like, for now, you folks should um, just memorize this table. So there's a list of, I don't know, like 20 of them that I want you to memorize. And so those, those would be important for you to memorize as well. Because I'm going to be going through this stuff pretty quickly and and you folks I don't want you to get burned as far as like not knowing how to do this stuff so if I were to ask you what is sodium sulfate you would have to look it up on the table and you know that sodium is Na yeah we okay. know that. and you know that sulfate if you look it up on the table that's SO4 Two negative. Got it? If you look inside of a periodic table, Na likes to make what kind of ion? Let's go back to that periodic table. Find sodium. What kind of ion does it like to make? I'll wait for you because I, I want you to understand this. 
In fact, I'll be honest with you, I think I'm even going to make this an assignment um, to print up a periodic table and put it right in, on your desk wherever you study. Because looking at the periodic table will help out a lot with you. Um, no, Sophia, it's not negative one. It's actually... It's positive one. Wait. Yes, it's positive one because it's on this side right here. Think of it this way. This guy has three shells, as we can see, and he's got one extra in that um, outermost layer. So he wants desperately to have no extra at all. So since he has one extra, he wants to get rid of it. And he gets rid of it, and he, and he goes, I lost an electron, I lost an electron. And then the other sodium says, are you sure? And he says, yeah, yeah, I'm positive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No comment. Yeah, I know. that was good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. I tried to hold in my left. Okay. Right. Wow, that was that was awesome. All right. That's what it was. All right. All right. All right. So I have a question. How many sodiums am I going to need to balance out the sulfate? Um. If the charge on this guy is positive one and the charge on this guy is negative two, so you would you would then need. Two. You would need two. So you have Na2SO4. This is sodium sulfate. And now you folks can look in the back of your um, the, the medicine that you buy and you guys can look at the chemicals and be like, oh, I, I know what that is. Yeah, totally. No, no, no. It gets much more complicated than this. But this is, this is as complicated as, as I'm getting now in, in this class. Got it? All right. What is, um, let's see, let me, let me throw another one your way. What is sodium hydrogen carbonate? Sodium? Let's see, sodium. Hydrogen. Carbonate. Assuming that sodium right. and hydrogen are both So one. I'm assuming that Na is the sodium, and that's plus one molecule. Got it? Hydrogen carbonate, if you look up in the table, and I'm, t I'm referring to the table on page 67 of our textbook looking thing, and if you look up in the table, hydrogen carbonate is HCO3 negative. Are we, are we, so we're going to have to memorize that? No, the, yeah, if, okay. I say, if I say the word hydrogen carbonate, you say, oh, that's HCO3 minus 1. Got it. That's not big deal. It's not going to be bad. Oh, no, after, I was, I was, I was, after a while, you'll get it. Okay. So how many sodiums am I going to need to balance out with my hydrogen carbonates? Tejas already got it. It's one. Because right. there's one positive, one negative. So if I ask you, write out sodium hydrocarbon, hydrogen carbonate, you would write out NaHCO3. Because here's the cation and here's the anion. So you just need one. That's not, that's not too bad. No, it's not bad at all. Yeah. All right, let's try something a little harder. Let's see. What about um, sodium selenate? Okay, we have sodium, which is plus one. I'm assuming, yes. Yes, Na likes to make plus one. Selenate, I'll look it up in the table. S Looking it up right now, I will selenate. need... Um, selenate. Where, where is it? Selenate. Selenate. Oh, it's not in the table. Silly. What? What a bunch of jerks this thing. What a jerk Mr. Dald is. All right, anyway. Do you want to Google this? Um, it's, I, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's SeO42 negative. Got it? Okay, so it would be... So how many sodiums do you need to balance out a selenate? And it's basically, yeah, you need to. Yeah. So it's Na2, SeO4. Se? I thought it was P, sorry. SeO4. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, the, the comment that I'll make on this one is, I didn't give you selenate in your table, and so maybe I won't give you a problem like that. That wouldn't be fair. But um, you could look it up. Essentially, sulfate is SO4 to negative. That's sulfate. 
that's a sulfur. Um, you can often replace um, things that are in the same. If we look at where silanate is and sulfur is, see here's sulfur and here's silanate. Do you see those two? They're right next to each other. Since they're in the same group, these guys are going to what? What? What kind of ions are the, do these ones want to form? Does mean they want to form positive ions? No, they want to form negative ions because oh. they're on this side. Positive ones come on this side. Where are? Oh, I was zoomed. I'm negative sorry. ones come on this side, on in. the right side. And these guys like to form negative two. If these ones like to form negative one, then the second column to the right likes to form negative two because they'll have two extra electrons that they want to get rid of. No, 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 it was, it was two extra electrons that they want to gain. Electrons? Oh, okay, wait. They, they have six electrons in their outer shell. They want eight. Okay. So they're desperately trying to get They're eight. trying to get... Right. As, as, you know, like chlorine has one, seven electrons in its outer shell. Right. It wants one more. To make it... Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? I'm negative. All right. Anyway. So... Do you see how these sulfur and selenate are, uh, yeah, have two extra electrons in their outer shell or wants to gain two extra electrons? Things that are in the same group can often be interchanged. I'm, I'm just letting you know this, not because, um, you know, like I, I'm going to ask you to memorize this, but anyway. Uh, sulfate is definitely on your list. Selenate is not on your list. But look, all I did was I replaced the sulfur with the selenate, you know selenium and I have selenium. Does that, that make sense? All right. Um, I'm going to do one more with you. Potassium, because I don't want to do sodium again. Potassium bromate. What is that? Bromine is... All right. Um, bromate is BRO3, and I think it's um, if I look it up in the table, bromate. Is that also not on our list? Dang, I gave you a list and it's not very helpful, is it? <laughs> All right, let's see. Let me just check. What is potassium? Oh, yeah. Potassium is positive 1. Bromate, I'll tell you what it is. It's BRO3 negative 1. So potassium bromate is pretty easy. It's KBRO3. Right. Bromate is very similar to chlorate. Chlorate is on your list. ClO3. I'm sure it is. It's got to be. Yeah. ClO3. ClO3. Oops. ClO3. Negative. All we did is, again, we changed out the, brom the, the chlorine for bromate. That's what, how it made bromate. Yeah. All right. There we go. But... I'm going to try to give you homework that's only on that list because that's the okay. one I want you to memorize. Sound fair? This list is in our textbook. Anyway. Why is potassium K? Mm, I used to know that. After I think, um, actually, I think that I have the card for it. Let me just look it up. Actually, let's look it up because you know, the the names used have changed over the years. Like obviously, why is gold AU? The chemical symbol K comes from kallium, the medieval, kallium, that's medieval what it is. Latin for potash, yeah. which may have derived from the Arabic word quali, meaning... Actually, so, so, like, why is uh, gold AU? Well, it's because um, it used to be called aurium, and I have no idea why it was called aurium, but, I mean, th that was, like, the old Latin name or something like that. Or, and then, so now the more common name that we've changed it to is gold. Or, why is... Why is uh, sodium and a and and you know knowing the uh, knowing the original name sometimes is actually really interesting and helpful about memorizing interesting things about them well the reason why na is is um, sodium is because sodium is so prevalent in our in in our world in uh, on earth right and because it's so prevalent on earth people thought that, that was like the natural sub substance so they called it natrium Okay. So, so it was yeah, called, yeah, it was yeah. originally called natrium, but um, we changed that word to sodium. Why did we change it to sodium? I don't know. I think natrium would have made more sense, but I think that maybe, maybe it's because 
we thought originally way back then that uh, that that was the most like common element in nature or something like that and and yeah. we realized that we were wrong so we said okay natrium is probably you know was the original name but it's pro it's probably not an accurate name so we're going to change it to sodium because sodium makes much more sense yeah you know what yeah. i mean like i don't know yeah basically just to make you like all right why is it sour on and sour on? i don't know to what make you your life miserable all right that's, 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 all right so anyway you'll have to memorize i want you to memorize the modern name and i want you to memorize the um the the modern symbols or the the but the thing is you memorize the modern name but the symbols are still the old symbols okay so i mean we didn't change the symbols we changed the names why don't they just change the symbols i don't know because it's kind of like why doesn't america adapt the metric system because somebody else got used to it so basically instead of making it easier for students we just say all right students because you need to get smart and memorize a whole bunch of stuff. That's why. Deal with it. You got it? All right. Um, I think I don't really want to get into the acids too much because that has to do with O, o chemistry. Um, old, old chemistry? O chemistry, organic oh, chemistry, chemistry okay. which is actually not easy at all. Um, if we're, if the last thing I want to co cover is um, type three, and this is binary covalent compounds. So if we're dealing with compounds that are um, two nonmetals coming together, a lot of times we have to give it a prefix name, um, and what that means is like, for example. Um, C CO2. You folks know what that is. What is it? I'm just kidding. It's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. I knew that one. Why can't we have a flash card on that one? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a flash card on that one if you want. All right. Carbon dioxide. Exactly. And carbon, if you look at carbon and oxygen, those are both non-metals. You have two things that are kind of coming together that are both like, not commonly cations and anions. Obviously, it has to have a balanced charge. But these are these are you know two things that are come together that are non-metals. When you have those cases, what you're going to need to do is in order to uh, in order to specify exactly which one uh, or how many you have of each, you have to add a prefix to it. And so the prefix, the common prefix is, is mono. Di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, H-E-P-T-A, octa, and nano, and dec nona, no, I thought it was nona, and deca. And you folks are already used to this already, right? This isn't like brand new stuff you've seen you've at least seen this before mono as in a monorail is one wheel uh, or one rail um, a bicycle has two wheels a tricycle has three a tetra I have no idea uh, I've never, yeah that doesn't make any sense a tetrahedron has four parts to it ha. sure yeah oh yeah that yeah the pentagon has five sides a hexagon is six-sided an octagon is uh, eight-sided sign uh, or an octopus has eight legs. Uh, Nona, I've never heard anyone use the word Nona for, to describe nine. We Obviously, we don't use nine very often. So like um, like N204, that would be di-nitrogen, um, tetra-oxide. And actually, I think that the way we spell it is we get rid of the, often we get rid of the vowel at the end when we write it together. So that way it's not tetraoxide, it's tetroxide. Easier way to say it, I guess. Nitrous oxide, um, 
actually nitrous oxide would be NO, I'm assuming. Ox nitrous oxide. And and technically nitrous oxide, you're you're saying it wrong. What it is, is it's nitrogen monoxide. Actually, not uh monoxide, it's monoxide. We get rid of that extra O. So it's not mono O oxide. That doesn't make sense. It would just be NO, right? It would just be monoxide. Okay. Got it? And technic so so when when people say nitrous oxide, they don't know what they're talking about. They should be saying nitrogen monox monoxide. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um let's see. I guess one question people might have is why don't we call it mono or mono nitrogen monoxide? And my answer is this because the first word, if it starts with a one, if it starts with a two, we add a prefix. But if it starts with a one, we never add a prefix. That's just a rule. It's easy to say it. I get, I don't Got it? So, like NO2. Nitrogen dioxide or N2O5 dinitrogen pentoxide. pentoxide. Right. You got it? That is the end of nomenclature, my friends. And I'll be honest with you, man, nomenclature is tough. It ain't an easy topic. I don't even think, I, I think I already assigned my homework on it. So you guys already finished the homework for this nomenclature. And I haven't even finished teaching it to you. That that seems quite unfair to me. I think that's the one I got 100 on. Yeah, some people did really well on it. It's just because you read the book and figured it out. I'm explaining to you folks the theory behind it. And then tomorrow, or on Monday, I'll cover stoichiometry, which Sorry. isn't, it, it, it really actually... I'll be honest with you, I think that chapter one and two are, are pretty heavy. Chapter three can be really uh, dicey, but I feel like I, I can teach it better. Like I, the, the s'mores lab that I'm coming up with in my head, that one's going to be a cool one. I hope so. Do we get to actually eat the s'mores? Yes, you get to eat the s'mores. No. Okay. Why would I make you stare at s'mores? That's I horrible. Know, you can, I mean, I, okay. That this would be me. That would be straight up me. All right. So my class is finished, and um, I... I Technically, I should finish at 3.40, but um, what do you folks want to do? You want to do some homework? Cool, okay, yeah. You want to look at the homework with Mr. Dalde? All right. Let's, Let's see. see. So you want us to use the same program that we did for the 40 point? All right. right. So let's see. Okay. This was all due in the past. Um, the nomenclature was only eight points, but I finally finished lecturing on it today, even though it was due back on the 28th. <laughs> That's, that sucks. Um, the lab scaling one, I don't know if you don't know how to do it, but I, I think it's pretty straightforward. This one is, you simply have to make flashcards. Let's, let's take a look at this assignment real quick, because I want to make sure that you guys can all do this one. All right, you guys can go. Yeah, you're gonna go. You're gonna go find out what your meds are made out of, and and, and remake them. Um, so I hate to say this, man. but there's a there's a topic called organic chemistry, and when it comes to medicine, that is like the killer class that everyone needs to take. And I didn't even take it yet. I haven't taken organic chemistry, um, but I heard it's really hard, like extremely hard. So right now you're learning general chemistry, and I'm actually teaching you guys to a college level. I'm teaching it to you at a really slow pace, but at a college level. So anyway, yeah, you don't need to be here. You guys can leave classes over. I'm just taking a look at some chemistry, just making sure you guys know. I put all the instructions up here. I made a video of how to do it. And then what I did was I want you to upload. Um, this is the instructions I want to give you. I want you to record a video 
of you going through all the flashcards, you simply just click this button right here, record media. And I think that there's an option to, um, for the Chromebooks at least, I checked this out on, on the Chromebook. You can actually record a video straight into that essay file, quote unquote essay file, and you just record it. I don't think that my computer that I'm using right now can do it, but I know your Chromebooks can do it. You just click this button right here, record and upload media. You probably have to press a few allow buttons and then allow it to see your camera and that kind of stuff. But what I want you to do is go through all of the flashcards as fast as you can. And then tell me what your time is in minutes. Got it? My time was two minutes. Two I got minutes. four wrong. Oh, look, there's my face. I guess it does. Report. Do we have to? Um, are you worried about seeing your face? Is that what you're worried about? <laughs> Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Some students don't like showing their face. Um, yes. But don't worry, Mr. Dalde is going to be the only one who sees this. Is Mr. Dalde a judge? Do I judge what? Do you, do you judge people by the face? No, look at my face. Yeah, if I would judge them, plenty of people would judge my face. All right. All right. If you don't want to, then find somebody who doesn't mind and... Have them show you the flashcards. Stand on the other side of the computer screen. Have them, sh like, get your mom and say, Mom, can you, can you sh like, quiz me? And then point the camera at them. So I know at least that it's, you know, I, I know that it's your voice and you're going through it and that kind of stuff. Mom, Mom, can you, can you quiz me? Just, just look at this <laughs> yeah. camera and you, uh, yeah. you're, you you're look doing, into this really camera. Good. Yeah. Mom, okay, you look here and no. you throw Mom, this don't worry about the camera. Don't Mom, the, 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 the red light means it's off. Yeah, forget the camera. But, but what, what, is it recorded? I don't want to be recorded. I don't want your teacher to see me. Blah, blah, blah. Gonna, yeah, mom, Forget, mom, mom it's I just off, need to do this. Mom. This is my part of my homework. Look, it, mom, mom, it's off. All right. So we, all right. So we, all we have to do is, all we have to do is just say the element on the card. Yes, exactly. And I want you to practice it until you get under two minutes. That's my, my, my thing. Under two minutes. Okay. Just keep going. Yeah. Just, just do it over and over again until you get under two minutes. You'll get 16 points for it. Um, I know that that seems like a fluff assignment. It really isn't. There is only really one way to memorize the periodic table and to really, you know, be good at chemistry. And I'm giving you the tools now. I'm ensuring that you do it. I will have other assignments coming up. I'm probably going to have a quiz or like a, like a, a kind of an exam coming up, um, or maybe a more of a project that you have to do, and that has to do with the periodic table. So, anyway. I'm going to move on to chapter three on Monday. I think that would be fair. Okay. Because chapter three isn't due until the eighth, which is like, I don't know. What is the eighth? It's like next week. The eighth? It, today's the second. So, yeah, next week. All right. But I think by the time I'm done with, uh, on, on, if I lecture on Monday, I'll be able to get through that. And I'll tell you what, if I don't finish by the time I need to, is then there? I'll push the assignments back. I have no That's problem. That's a good with that. question. Is there class on Monday? I think. Is it oh yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. There is no class on Monday. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. Is I'll move this homework assignment to be due on another day. Which one is this? This, this would be the one that's due on the Tuesday. The uploading one. Wait. The one due on Tuesday. There's an assignment due on Tuesday. I'll move that to be due on another day because there is no. There's no school on. There's no Monday, school right? on Monday. Yeah. Cool. I can go to the beach. All right. So let me just do that now. Um, I'll push these guys back to the tent. Sound good? And if I don't finish, darn. Chapter three question. Or two? All right. Well, no, no, that's fine. It looks like that lab is going to be starting off lecturing on stoichiometry. And I won't lecture. I'm just going to uh, start it off with the lab. I think the, the stoichiometry lesson is going to be really good. Okay. What, what is, is that all chapter three? Stoichi, stoichiometry. That's what the chapter is called. It doesn't include just stoichiometry. Okay. But it has to do with like the mole and the molar mass. And that kind of hey, stuff. anything that has to do with small, like s'mores. S'mores is a good thing. I will, yeah. It's more well, Pokemon cards. technically class is finished. Can I cover one more thing with you folks? On 
I'm not opposed. All right. I, I just kind of want to want to cover this really quickly, um, just to kind of introduce it because it would really help me out when I start talking about um, stoichiometry on Wednesday. Um, what is a dozen? Twelve. Yeah, as soon as I say the word dozen, immediately you type in the number 12. That's like an auto recall on your brain. A dozen. You right? A dozen eggs. A dozen right? means 12. A right? baker's dozen is 13. Right? A baker's dozen is 13, but a dozen means 12. Right? You've been taught that since little kid time. Yes. And why do we have that? What's the point in having... Open the door. It's so hot in here. What is the point in having a dozen? Um... This, this conversation may seem trivial, but I do want you to participate in it, and I have a point. The Oddly enough, the crazy things that I do often have a point. Believe it or not. I guess a dozen is like the fundamental however many you get. Why, do we, so, why do we come up with the idea of a dozen? First of all, I think it's English, so I think it's weird. I guess so, yeah. All English things are weird. Darn, I lost uh, connection. I lost connection, too. All right. Well, I guess class is finished. I think we all finished. Well, Mr. Matson or Maston. Maston, yeah. Uh, I guess it's just you and me then. Oh, okay. I guess it's other people too. A all dozen. Right. Yeah, it's back. Sorry, the flashcards were off. What is a dozen? A dozen is twelve. Why do we come up with the idea of a dozen? A dozen. So, is is it like is it like, or uh, is is bake is baker stuff? The, you know how like we, we counted like we go tens and then we go hundreds. It's all based on tens. So ten tens is a hundred. No, 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 ten, not really. But so. I think I think it's because here here's what my thoughts are, and you can tell me whether or not I'm crazy. Um, if I ask you to go out and pick up forty eight eggs, I think a dozen makes it easier to count. Two dozen. Eggs. If I asked you to pick up forty eight eggs, you would just go pick up four packages of eggs. Right? Four pack. Four packages? Yeah, four packages. What am I? Yeah, four packages. You would get four if I asked you to pick up 36 eggs, eggs, you would pick up... Four packages. Three packages of eggs. If I asked you to pick no, up 36... Three, okay, yes. Right. Ah. Uh, so it's just it just makes it easier. It's this it's this concept of a group. I'm, I'm just grouping them together. You know, like, when you count out pennies, what do you do? You... you or when you count out dimes, what do you do? When you have a, like a bag full of dimes. So I'm saying you got you, you ten ten dimes and it's right. It's you group them in, in groups of ten. I, I was getting I was getting. There. You group them in groups of ten, and then you then you can just count the groups of ten and say dollar 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 dollar, dollar yeah. right? So it makes it easier to count a large number of stuff. So it's like those those, those things that you stick the points into. Those right. Things. Exactly. So, do you understand the idea of a dozen? In fact, let's let's even go through and do some dozen math or something like that. Dozen, and, and I'm not even going to not even going to draw it out or write it out or whatever. I'm just going to talk about it with you because I think you'll get it. Hey, Mr. Dolde. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Forty-eight eggs is how many dozens? You can say it out loud. Four. It's four dozen. Um, Five dozen eggs is how many eggs? Sixty. Sixty. How did you figure that out? Five dozen eggs is equal to sixty. Well, if if four dozen eggs equals forty-eight, and a dozen is twelve, all you have to do is easier. You just multiply five times twelve. Right. Okay. Okay. Sure. So if I told you forty-eight eggs is four dozen, uh, and forty-eight eggs is how many dozen, and you divided that one by twelve, right? Forty-eight. Eggs, yeah. And then, and then I ask you, how many is five dozen eggs, and you multiply by 12? Essentially, a dozen is just a conversion factor. And you can divide or multiply depending on what's in the numerator and denominator. Do you guys remember this conversation we had way back when we were doing converting units? Yeah. Right? Okay. I know I'm beating this dead horse till it's dead, but um, the thing about it is, I'm going to introduce to you this concept called the Avogadro's number. And I know it sounds like avocado. In fact, to be honest with you, I think I wrote this number on an avocado and thought it was very funny, and so it's my avocado number. Um, it's a good way for me to memorize it. This dude was named Avogadro. And basically, he realized that, hmm, if we're counting things in chemistry, we're going to talk about huge numbers. 
like significantly royally big numbers. Uku plenty, if I may suggest. Like, for example, we're talking more than like grains of sand on the beach. You know what I mean? Like, if I asked you to count the grains of sand on the beach, what would you do? You would probably Run. count. Yeah, you would say, all right, give me the F. I don't even want to talk to you anymore. Um, <laughs> I will take the zero. Yeah. No, no. If I asked you to count the grains on the, uh, of sand on the beach, theoretically what you could do is you could take a bucket full, right? And then count the grains of sand in the bucket. And then what you would do is you would basically say how many bucketfuls are on the beach. Done. Right? But, but, but we're get... talking about a huge number here. Right, so a dozen isn't going to cut it. I'm not going to. If I, you ask me to count the grains of sand inside of, on the on the beach, I wouldn't separate them into little piles of a dozen grains of sand, and then count those dozens together. No. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. We'll need and and what we're talking about here are things that are extremely small, like atoms. So we're saying how many atoms fit on top of in, in a penny? How many? Uh, copper atoms are in a penny. You see what I mean? We're talking about huge numbers. Much more than the sand on the beach. That's probably more than the sand in the world. That hurt. Ouch. So, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to come up with this new grouping number. Wow. And this new grouping number is going to be a really big number. Do you agree? It's got to be. If it's... Wow. If, if we're talking about like if we're talking about counting the types of things that we're counting. So, the amount of atoms in this room. So, let me tell you what the number is. I'll show it to you. It's um, 6022. All right, 1, 2, 3. 1023. That's that's not reassuring. This is the number. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. So it's 6 with 23 zeros after it. And all this is... Now, okay. Immediately, I threw this number out there, and I saw Matt's, or Mastin's face. He basically said, that is so big, I just feel stupid now. And I don't know how I can... I have pretty much felt stupid the entire, the well, entire no, conversation here. I mean, well, what I'm saying... How have you been feeling stupid? We've just been talking about a dozen. Okay. Okay, that, that, that's true. I was talking about the, the whenever we started off with the periodic table, and I felt stupid. Oh, okay. All right, fine. But right. this makes me feel even more stupid. All right, you can go, by the way. Uh, yes, please listen to the recording, because I think this is an interesting topic. Um, this, this number is all it is. It's, it's our new dozen. It's our new way of clumping atoms together. Where did we come up with this number? To be honest with you, I don't know. But I know that I memorized it, and I know that it's super important. It is extremely important for you to know. Back when I was in chemistry, like 10, 15 years ago, they made me sew a little um, uh, doll together with this number on it. And I still have that doll to this day. That must have been a big doll. No, no, no. It didn't have like all those zeros on it. It had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd okay. power. Learn this number, but look. Don't be afraid. Don't let your brain turn into jelly when you see it. All it is, Too late. all it is, is it's the new dozen. So, with like, is there like a? It's just where did they? Where how? did they come? I don't know. Um, Celeste, Sarah, where did they come up with Avogadro? How did Avogadro come up with this number? Do you know? No, I don't. Oh. See, Google it's will. funny because like, I don't think any of the science teachers in this room know. And I mean, to me, it's, it's, it, I, I, I still don't know. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Um, I was just curious if you guys knew. Hey, Bradley, what's going on? Bradley just happened to join us right now. Really? Yeah. He's, he's going to tease me at this point. Hello, Bradley. All right. That is the second time someone's dog has got out in this, in That's this true. conversation. That's true. That's true. Wow. Right. What so, a coincidence. So anyway, I want you guys to, I'm, I'm going to end class at this point, but I want you to um, understand this concept of a mole. Look it up if it confuses you. Um, 
But for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to talk about uh, the the number dozen, and then say you know how to you you know how to deal with dozen. Dealing with a mole isn't any different from that. It's just a different kind of grouping. It's a different number. And why does it have to have so many darn zeros? Well, it's because we're grouping large numbers of things. Like, or actually, we're grouping really small things which come in very large quantities. Like, for example, molecules, or protons, or, you know, electrons or atoms so we need these huge numbers or we need this this huge grouping thing to compensate for that so we could say a reasonable number like six moles as opposed to saying four dozen I'll say four moles which means you know That's crazy and and four moles of hydrogen atoms is actually not a whole lot Right? Because even though a mole is a huge number, four moles of hydrogen atoms, atoms are so incredibly small. You know what I mean? It's not like four moles of hydrogen atoms is going to take up a huge amount. Right. Okay. Actually, I, I take that back. Number. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't really have an, a, a good grasp on that just yet. I think I'll, I'll, I'll understand it better. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> hey Bradley, by the way, um, Bradley, you finally came in. Um, yes, I was late for class. I apologize. I um, I had to deal with something else. I couldn't make it. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, no. You don't need to be sorry. Um, you were you were screaming about how uh, I get to give you free points, and you're absolutely right. I remember that before I even found out you saying anything about it. Um, I'm going to give you free points for math class today. Um, it's my bad. I, I didn't show up on time. Um, check your teacher's comp grade and that grade should go up higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you. I heard they were saying you were screaming about it. And I was like, oh, that's funny. Um, but I wanted to let you know so that you know that I'm a man of my word. Okay, see you.